So recently I've been having a bit of a tough time creatively. I've not been doing videos and not really taking much photographs. This is a, for a couple of reasons really. One, I started watching a lot of YouTube videos and got really frustrated with um, the quality of people's videos and the quality of my own work to be honest. I also listened to people when they said about gear doesn't matter and to that extent I wanted to um, put this at the beginning of this video. I know I'm going to talk about the Nikon FM2 but I just wanted to say that I've been having a few issues with this gear doesn't matter thing because to me gear does matter. It's been there for me when like now photography is I'm not really getting anything from it, or not, only, not necessarily getting anything from it, but I seem to be in a bit of a creative creative rut. I've been going to some events just recently, I've been to a steampunk event, and I couldn't, I couldn't get inspired, I couldn't take any pictures. And I think this stems from people saying about gear doesn't matter and stop buying cameras and just go and shoot. But without going and buying cameras, um, I wouldn't have got this Nikon FM2. And the same this last few weeks, I have missed a few cameras and that's kind of like bummed me out actually. And so as much as people say gear doesn't matter, and I think that's more to do with the fact that don't make excuses, go out and shoot. But because I'm starting out and I'm new to this and I don't know what I want to do or what I want to shoot or whatever, finding these cameras and experiencing them and shooting with them has, has actually helped me because it's shown me what a different camera can do, what a different lens can do. And to be honest, I actually get something from the, uh, the hunt for the camera. So, you know, this last few weeks, I've actually missed out on some really nice cameras. It's kind of like another thing that's annoyed me. Also, these last few weeks, I have had some more issues scratching film. I've subsequently found out that it is actually a heat issue. I did actually, for the last two films I shot, I aerated the bag, I sat in front of the fan and they both went on within a few minutes so I definitely think it's got something to do with uh, heat and temperature and my hands being sticky in the bag. I'll show some of those images from the uh, roll of film that I destroyed. It was actually a 1940s weekend, I took the uh, Nikon there. To get back on the horse I um, spoke to a local model and did a shoot. And we went out and I shot both the um, Pentax 6.7 and the Nikon FM2 and that was when I um, discovered about the heat so I sat in front of the fan and both films came out brilliantly so I'm really happy with that and it's helped me a little bit but um, yeah I seem to be in a bit of a creative, creative rut where I'm not really inspired to uh, go out and shoot and I don't really want to force it. I took my camera today with me to work and I'm wondering if actually that is part of the issue because I'm in a, a job at the moment where it is really busy and I'm coming home and I'm absolutely tired then I'm going to the gym and, and crushing it there so probably just run down. So maybe having a bit of time out will be quite helpful. So yeah, I wanted to talk about the Nikon FM2. This again was a camera purchase, um, gear acquisition if you want to call it. But to be honest, I'm really glad I found this camera because it is amazing. Before this I was shooting with the Canon A1, which is a beautiful camera. But this thing, I didn't know anything about it. I got a really good deal, got it in a bargain bin um, in a local camera shop and it was apparently faulty so took it back it wound on okay shot a roll through it is absolutely amazing and I found what the issue is on the um, FM2N you have to pull this switch out to turn it on which some people say is a pain in the butt because when you're doing street photography if you forget to pull it out and you go to take the picture it won't actually fire 
um, but the good thing about this one is it actually does fire with that in so that's the issue with it but it's actually a hidden bonus <laughs> so here we have the Nikon FM2N it is an amazing camera made in 1984 this one is the N version I believe the main difference being the flash sync speed on the uh, FM2 it was 1 200th of a second and on the FM2N it was 250th of a second one of the great things about this camera is the fact that the shutter speed goes up to 1 4000th of a second which in bright sunlight is an absolute godsend the this camera to work it you should actually use this advanced lever to pull it out and then that actually activates the light meter inside the camera but this one is actually faulty so it does actually work when the lever is in place but on most models this doesn't work yeah one of my personal projects is to shoot um, things that matter it was actually in response to a video by Azrael Knight um, I'll link to that down below where he went to shoot a church and unfortunately the church burned down before he had a chance to go and shoot it so there's a couple of places that are derelict houses um, so I thought that I would take this opportunity to go out and shoot the film so I went and shot the house on the Pentax um, so I'll do a video and show that in there but in this video I'll show some images I got with the Nikon and uh, yeah, give my impressions on the camera. So after the disaster with the Pentax 67 I decided to take this camera out to a uh, 1940s weekend at a local place here um, called Woodall Spa. Apparently it's an event they have every year. Um, this is the first time I've actually been to it but uh, I was really impressed. It was a great day out, great fun. Um, lots of people dressed up in period costumes, lots of cars and just general nostalgic atmosphere that was amazing. There was uh, reenactments and um, yeah, just a general great weekend. I only went for one day, apparently it was on for two days, but uh, it's something that I'll probably go to again next year, having seen it and uh, know what to expect. <coughs> um, I took the Nikon and I'll show some of the images. Unfortunately, this is the roll of film that I scratched. So, while I really liked the quality of the image and the images I actually captured, some of them I really like. But unfortunately, I have a line running all the way through. This, I think, was down to me um, with getting too hot in the bag. But then also, <clears throat> because it was a 35mm, I had some scissors in the bottom of the bag. And I think ratcheting the film and <clears throat> I had to crack it open a couple of times because it just wouldn't load onto the reel. And I think I actually scratched the film with the scissors, which really bummed me out. And it bummed me out for a few weeks. Um, <clears throat> and not in a negative way, it really just kind of like... Oh, should I should I be developing film? Should I just send it to a lab? So the next time I went out, I took the Nikon again, and this time instead of uh, FP4, I actually shot Ilford uh, HP5. Um, 
because it was a really sunny bright day I actually rated it at 200 and um, I'll show again the images from this this was a day in Lincoln it was a uh, vintage car show it was again another great day out um, and it was really nice to uh, just take a slow pace take the uh, nick on and just both days I actually metered with a handheld light meter didn't exposed for the shadows just uh, metered to the sun and shot it at that speed got some uh, <clears throat> pretty interesting results the um, HP5 I noticed is uh, a lot more grainier than the FP4 um, I think I really prefer the FP4 to be honest but <clears throat> have a look at the images from both shoots and you let me know what you think Yeah, so the creative rut that I've been in, I decided to um, go out with a model for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, I've not shot a model for a, for a long time. Um, so my friend Joe and I, we actually went out and uh, did some car boot hunting and just general having fun. Um, then we stopped for a quick shoot. We found a cornfield and uh, I again shot with the FM2N and the Pentax 6.7. Um, both of those films came out great I might be able to show an image in here but uh, yeah it was a great shoot and to be honest it kind of uh, helped me feel inspired again um, so yeah I need to uh, get back on it and uh, shoot some more stuff so the Nikon FM2N is it worth buying? absolutely <laughs> is it better than an F3? Um, that's debatable um, for me it probably is purely because of a couple of things the F3 is a 1 2,000th of a second shutter speed this shoots at 1 4,000th and the Nikon F3 needs a battery whereas this one doesn't so yeah it is a great camera the Nikon F3 has TTL metering and exposure compensation but to be honest these are two features that I've never really needed this is absolutely fantastic I can leave it in my bag and because it doesn't need a battery it doesn't matter I can leave a film in there I can just leave it you know and I can just go out and shoot so for that alone it's actually amazing I know that um, in the film world the the camera isn't actually the most important part it's the lens and the film but that being said there is certain things about cameras that do make our life a lot easier and I don't care who you are whether you're Henry Cartier-Bresson or whoever if you have a piece of kit that makes it a joy to use and is easy to use yeah I'm uh, pretty glad I've got uh, what people call gas because this is an experience that I highly recommend it's probably one of my favorite 35 millimeter films that I own. I, if I'm going out anywhere, this is probably the one that I'd reach for first and put in my bag, especially paired with a 1.4 Nikon lens. It's absolutely beautiful. It's also the camera of choice for Mary Ellen Mark. She's a great master photographer. Check out her work. And she used the Nikon FM2. So if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.